Here we're going to look at two problems from the 2018 Israel National Math Olympiad. So the first one is a nice combinatorics problem, and the second one is involving an inequality. So let's look at the first. So n people are sitting in a circle, and each person is either a liar or a truth teller, and this knowledge is public. So in other words, every person either always tells a lie or always tells the truth and each person knows the status of each other person being a liar or a truth teller. Then in turn, each person says this statement, the person two seats to my left tells the truth. And the question is, is it possible for N to be equal to 2017 or 5,778 given the condition that there must be at least one liar and at least one truth teller. So in other words, the condition is not satisfied if everyone lies or if everyone tells the truth. And I wanna point out that this 5778 is actually the Hebrew year in the Hebrew calendar corresponding to kind of the standard year 2017. So that's a little game I think they played here with the years. Okay, so let's maybe get into the solution here. So I'll draw a picture of the whole setup. So let's say we've got person A1 here. We have person A2, A3, A4. This is going all the way around. We have person AN minus one here and person AN here. So let's see, for example, this person A3 is going to say, A1 tells the truth. And that's because A3 is talking about the person that's two seats to the left of them. I guess we're assuming here that they're facing outwards just so that it makes sense for the left and the right to work, but that doesn't really matter. But then the general occurrence is that the person AM says the statement AM minus two tells the truth. So that's the statement which is said by person AM. So this actually breaks down into two cases. The first case is AM tells the truth, in other words, they're a truth teller, or AM is a liar. But notice we've got some choice over what AM is, whether or not they are a truth teller or a liar, and that's because there must be at least one of each. So let's find M such that AM tells the truth. And so now notice that that tells us the following thing. That tells us that AM minus two is also a truth teller because AM said it so and AM tells the truth. Furthermore, that tells us that AM plus two is also a truth teller and AM minus four and AM plus four. So let's maybe go ahead and write that down. So we have AM, AM plus two, AM plus four all the way up and all the way down, those are all truth tellers. Okay, good. Now what I wanna do is set n equal to 2017 and see if this is possible. So if we've got n is equal to 2017, then this really breaks down into two little cases. And one is m is even. Now notice that if M is even, then we can extend this all the way down to the smallest even number, which is A sub two. So in other words, we have A sub two, A sub four, A sub six, all the way up to A sub 2016, that's the largest even number, tell the truth. But now we can extend that further, but we extend ourselves around the circle. So notice in this current setup, a sub 2016 is sitting right here. And remember, their status corresponds to the status two people to the left and two people to the right. So if we look two people to the right, we see that A sub one is also a truth teller. But if A sub one is a truth teller, then so is A sub three, and so are all of the odd numbered people as well. So here we have A sub one, a sub three, all the way up to A sub 2017, they also tell the truth. Good, but now notice that we have everyone in the list here. So everyone is a truth teller, but that's a contradiction. So I'll just put that contradiction because no one lies. 
So in other words, the answer to this N equals 2017 question, is that possible? The answer is no. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this part and we'll look at the case when N is equal to 5,778. So we just got done determining and arguing that N could not be equal to 2017 because it caused everyone to either be a truth teller or a liar, kind of depending on your starting point. Now we're gonna argue that it is possible for N equals 5,778, and that's because 5778 is an even number. And in fact, all we really need to do here is provide some sort of setup for this possibility being achieved. And that's not so hard to do based on our observations in the last case. And so let's just notice that we can achieve this possibility with A1 equals A3 equals all the way up to A5777, tell the truth and then A2 equals A4 equals all the way up to A sub 5, 7, 7, 8, all lie. And that's a perfectly legitimate setup. So in other words, in this 5, 7, 7, 8 case, the answer is yes, it is possible. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at the second problem. So our next problem involves establishing some sort of minimum and maximum for a certain expression. So that means we're gonna be dealing with inequalities. So for A, B, and C, real numbers, we wanna find the maximum and the minimum of this expression. So notice the numerator is the absolute value of A plus B, plus the absolute value of B plus C, plus the absolute value of A plus C, and then the denominator is the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B plus the absolute value of C. So you can pretty easily guess what the maximum is. And that's just by thinking that generally when you have the absolute value and a sum, the maximum is achieved when both entries are positive. So let's maybe notice real quick that if A, B, and C are all bigger than or equal to zero. And I guess I should put here that they're not all equal to zero. Then that tells us that we can take this object right here, absolute value A plus B, and just remove all the absolute values. It's pretty clear you can remove all the absolute values because everything is non-negative. So if we remove all the absolute values, we see the numerator becomes two times the quantity A plus B plus C. The denominator is just A plus B plus C, so we get this is two. So the guess is that two would be the maximum here. And probably to think about how to prove this, you should jump to thinking about the triangle inequality because we've got these absolute values and how do you break up absolute values? That's with the triangle inequality. So let's recall what the triangle inequality says. That says, for all x, y, which are real numbers, we have absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. So that means our expression right here, which I'll just bring down, can be simplified via an inequality by ripping these absolute values apart using the triangle inequality. So if we take these absolute values apart in the numerator, we can factor a two out and we'll have the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B plus the absolute value of C all over that same denominator. But notice that's equal to two. So in other words, our expression is always less than or equal to two. And we achieve this maximum when they are all non-negative, where one of them is not zero. And that's necessary so we don't have any zeros in the denominator. Okay, so now let's look at the minimum. Now we're ready to calculate the minimum value. And this minimum is achieved a lot of places as well. And you can kind of look at this and intuitively guess what should happen. And that is by thinking about minimizing absolute values. So absolute values will minimize when their argument is equal to zero. So we might want to think about the case when this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero. But that only occurs when we have some setup like A equals B equals negative C. 
But notice if we have a equals b equals negative c, then that means our numerator will become the absolute value of a plus b, and our denominator will become 3 times the absolute value of a, like that. But next, since a and b are the same, we can write that numerator as 2 times the absolute value of a over 3 times the absolute value of a, which equals 2 thirds. So we've immediately found a place, and that is when a equals b equals negative c, and they're all non-zero where our expression is equal to 2 thirds. Now we just want to build an inequality that puts 2 thirds at the bottom side of it. So let's see how we can do that. So I'll write this expression again. So we've got our goal expression here, and we want to notice that since a, b, and c cannot all be zero, then that means one of them has to be positive or one of them has to be negative. But that tells us that two of the numbers from A, B, C are either non-positive or non-negative. But since we've got some symmetry in our expression by negating everything, we might as well take those to be non-negative. So in other words, we might as well take two of A, B, and C to be non-negative. But then again, since we have symmetry between all of the variables a, b, and c, we might as well take a and b to be non-negative. So I'm going to summarize that as without loss of generality, we can take a and b to be bigger than or equal to zero. Although in an exam, you'd have to write up what I just said verbally. And that actually brings up a good point that I can skip a lot of writing because I'm verbally explaining what's going on. But you would need to write quite a bit more than what I do on the board in these videos. Okay, so like I said, without loss of generality, we're taking a and b to be bigger than or equal to zero. That means that I can get rid of this absolute value. So here I have this is a plus b plus absolute value of b plus c plus absolute value of a plus c all over absolute value of a plus absolute value of b plus absolute value of c like that. But now as we manipulate this object, we're going to need to be a little bit tricky so that we create something in the numerator that can be canceled in the denominator. And what we'll end up doing is the following. So I'm going to say this is bigger than or equal to. We'll replace the numerator with 2 thirds times the quantity a plus b plus 1 third times the quantity a plus absolute value a plus c plus b plus absolute value b plus c. And now my denominator has not changed. So I want to notice that the number of a's and b's well, I should say free a's and b's up in the numerator is the same. I have 2 thirds a plus b here and 1 third a plus b in the other term. That gives me my whole a plus b. But then I've replaced absolute value a plus c and absolute value b plus c with 1 third times each of those, making that numerator smaller and thus the whole thing smaller. Okay, great. Now we're going to do one more replacement. And since a and b are non-negative, we can replace a with the absolute value of negative a and b with the absolute value of negative b. So those are the same given this. Next, what we'll do is use the triangle inequality to push these two together. So let's see what that gives us. So the triangle inequality gives us the inequality in the right direction. And now we have 2 thirds a plus b plus one third. Now in the parentheses, we'll be left with absolute value of C plus absolute value of C like that. Okay, so let's see how that goes. Well, I push those two absolute values together and the minus A and the A cancel and the minus B and the B cancel. Okay, good. And now in the denominator, we have this same thing, which is absolute value A plus absolute value B plus absolute value C. So next we'll use again that A and B are non-negative to replace A with absolute value of A and B with absolute value of B. And then we'll replace absolute value of C plus absolute value of C with two times absolute value of C. That allows us to factor a two thirds out of the numerator and then cancel the denominator with what's left over. So this whole thing cancels down to two thirds. So we've got our goal expression is bigger than or equal to two thirds. 
And we found an infinite family of places where this two thirds is achieved, meaning that two thirds is the minimum. And that's a good place to stop.